All right, well, with any luck, we get some sound coming through, and um, we, we should be live. Uh, yes, my, me and my brother are back again. And, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> he's going to do the painting, and I'm going to do a lot of the talking, and hopefully we're going to get him to do some talking as well, because we were just discussing what we would chat about, uh, depending on whether somebody has something interesting to say in the chat, and we will respond to that if we can. Um, I'm going to run a poll as normal. My suggestion to you is... Um, feel free to respond to the poll and um, grab your paints, your miniatures, your brushes, get, get comfortable. The sound will improve because I won't be standing in this position for like ever. I will have to actually change my position so you can actually hear me better. I'm just, I plug these, these earplugs so I can tell that there's actually sound coming through. So yeah, for those of you who are like, ah, oh, I've read the sound, is garbage. Don't you worry, it'll get better. It's just uh, I'm in the wrong, standing in the wrong place, where I should be sitting in a different place. So, um, let's get started. Hi, welcome to How to d, &D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today, uh, well, it's my holiday, and I'm hanging out with my brother, and we're going to be covering the Nightwalker. Um, in fact, um, I wouldn't say we are painting. Uh, I'd say David is painting. <laughs> um, I'm just sitting here watching him, asking him questions and talking. So, uh, that's that's the plan, is like the Nightwalker. Now, I would have to say that the 5e version of the Nightwalker in terms of lore is kind of dull. Like, it doesn't feel like there's very much there. Um, this certainly looks like there's words, but I don't know if they necessarily said anything that was that useful. Uh, it's really weird. So, so we're kind of going to bring up different topics as we go, and uh, we'll see how this sort of works out for everybody. Uh, this thing is huge. It's a big miniature, and I believe we're going to have a lot of fun seeing how long it takes David to actually complete it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, jeez. It's a lot of colour. All right, do you want to explain to people while we're um, seeing how people, you know, people jumping in, mm. what you did to this thing before we even start? Um, I pre-shaded it. So um, I primed it black. Um, I hit the highlights down on, a, on, on an angle um, to get the lighter colours for the shading and then um, put shadows underneath with blues because it's going to be, you know, I think, a night walker is just black, just painting something black is a bit boring. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, I'm putting, trying to put it into a colour format of, of darkness. So um, it'll be blues and turquoises and just whatever sort of things I can throw together to keep it dark, but um, just to make it colourful as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be building up from those, um, those darker shades of blue and working our way into colour from there. Um, and today is probably just going to be a lot of blocking and colour, to be honest, because the thing's so it's just so big. Um, right. So, quick question: You did that with an air, airbrush, right? Yes, Badger airbrush, Badger can, Patriot. Can you do that sort of thing with just a brush, the the way you've painted it? You can, but it's going to take you a long time. Right. Okay. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let you get started, and yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just going to mix. I'm going to start working with the blues, so I'll just be mixing dark blues and then so gradually mixing lighter blues and building my way up and changing into turquoises and. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Oh, I'm, I'm interested. So you, so what colour are you using? Using black and what blue is that? Uh, it's ultramarine blue, actually. Ultramarine. So that yeah. says in Warhammer 40k. Yes, and funnily enough, it's not actually city art paint. It's actually it's actually Vallejo, but it's oh. just called ultramar ultramarine blue. Okay. All right. Um, cool. um, I guess it's become. It's it's they're so so well known as ultramarines. The colour has become mm -hmm. um, general. So you were telling me you had watched uh, Pan's Labyrinth last night. Oh yeah. And um, there is a character in there that kind of looks a bit like the Night Walker, right? Yes, yes, the Fawn. He's um, he's a very dark sort of. I mean, all the characters in it are dark, but um, yeah, he's he has a very similar, uncannily similar shape to this um, Night Walker, actually. Right. Yeah. So spoilers for Pan's Labyrinth. Give us a rundown of this story and how this this creature relates to it. Because if this thing is very similar to what the the Nightwalker looks like, I'm kind of interested to know what's what's it, what it's what it's like in the story. I'm kind of surprised that the, the, the little girl that's in it doesn't freak out about all the stuff that she sees in that movie. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's based in a reality situation where um, she's trapped with a, a father, um, the well, father-in-law, um, who is a is a captain a soldier. Um, and um, he's a very brutal, nasty piece of work. So she's trapped in this situation. So they go to this lodge in the in the woods, and he's trying to defend this post from some rebels. Um, and um, 
she, to, to escape, she, she sort of goes into a fantasy land. She, she reads these fantasy books that her mum gave her. Um, and, um, but she really literally goes in there. She, goes, she finds a labyrinth there calling to her from a what looks like a stick insect with wings. So it's a flying stick insect that turns into a fairy. Um, <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket. Yep. Um, and that just happens to be one of the fawn's pets. Um, and uh, yeah, she goes into the labyrinth and, and meets him. And, um, but you never really 100% know whether she's actually imagining all of this stuff or actually it's real. But she sort of opens doors with a piece of chalk and stuff. And you th- sort of think if she can go through a wall with a piece of, by drawing a door on a piece of chalk, with a piece of chalk, um, there must be some sort of reality in what's going on. And also she's trying to heal her mum, you know, with um, a, um, a plant under her, <laughs> under her bed that she feeds blood. So, yeah. A plant under her bed that she feeds blood to. Yeah, oh, I can't remember the name of those plants. Um, those, those... It, it's all right. It sounds creepy enough. Okay. It's creepy. Yes. Yeah. They've got them in Harry Potter as well, those, um, those, those roots. Um, uh, mandrake. Mandrake. Ah, you feed it blood. Okay. Yeah, so you put it in a bowl of milk. Mm-hmm. Um, and then every day you feed it a few drops of blood and it was healing her mum um, saying so, it was actually working too Okay. so that's why I was sort of think, wondering hmm, I wonder how much of this is actually imagination or I wonder if she is actually interacting with this, these, these supernatural characters um, because nobody else sees them but her because she, she goes and finds them at night time right because they're always, always at night time so how does the fawn thing that's kind of like this Nightwalker um, um, fit into the story? Well, apparently she's a princess in another dimension. Um, and, um, and he's her um, sort of like a, um, her bodyguard, I guess. Mm. Um, and so he comes and tells her all about it. Um, and, and she has to fulfill some tasks to, um, to win her right as, as, as a place to get back and to, to be the princess and to get into that realm. So she has to pass a whole bunch of tests um, that he gives her, um, and they're very, one of them in particular is pretty terrifying. The, the, the pale man is, um, yeah, he's he eats babies, so it's it's pretty freaky. It's, it's pretty freaky, right? You don't see him eat babies though, but even you know you know when people lean to the concept of somebody doing something like that, that's still really freaky. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. And it's very H.R. Geigerish sort of thing, so it's um it's a bit sort of it's very dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very dark. So, so I know the Nightwalker, we were just having a look at some of the lore in um, Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, and I was like, okay, so it's an undead, uh, it says it's from the negative plane, it says it's from the sh- sort of the shadow fell, um, it doesn't really give you very much, I, I was like, how can you have like four or five paragraphs and actually have said very little? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a little it's a little weird, I have to say. I say it's a bummer. Um, because just looking at the model, it's such a cool character, and even the imagery of of, of it, it's mm-hmm. um, it would be nice to have a cool story for it. Have you ever fought a Nightwalker before? Have I ever thrown one of these things at you? No. I, no. no, you usually throw ridiculous shit. At yeah, you. I did. I did. I mean, I mean, <laughs> the Nightwalker's pretty ridiculous. It's ridiculously dark, um, but you sort of, you, you, when we were playing, I think you were more comedic a lot of the time, except for that one undead dragon that I painted up and you threw that at us, and um, we almost all died. Yeah, but you guys were comedic. Oh, what was the skydiving shit and the jumping on the dragon? Like, every, once one person jumped on, everybody jumped on. That, that was yeah, ridiculous. That was Rosie's fault, man. It always oh, usually starts with Rosie. What, I don't remember. Was She's she the a one, vampire. Did she start it? Yeah. Because then we had people f- who were falling off the, um, the, sh- the, the, the flying ship and the dragon, yep. plummeting to their death, and then people trying to catch up to them. Yep. Uh, you were running around on the dragon fighting the, um, the undead lord, if I remember right. That's right, because I was a paladin. I was a paladin. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, yeah, and Rosie was a, um, she was a vampire, right? I think she, she was a vampire? Yeah, she was the, the vampire class. This is when we were playing. And a thief, eh? Well, An assassin or thief or something. No, she she wasn't. I don't think she had any class that was related or any features that related to being a thief. But okay. when when Rosie plays anything, she always steals shit. She always steals stuff. That's her favourite part of playing the game. I, I know. It's treasure I, hoarding is her th- she loves it. Yeah, it's, and like, anything she can find. Rose, Rose, stop! We're in the middle of a fight. Come and give us a hand. No, no, she's, she's no, no, no. She's she's, she's 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 looting the um, yeah. looting the treasure chests. Oh my gosh! Well, she doesn't want us to get it. She wants to get it while we're busy. So yeah, I know, I know. Sort of she's yeah. That's um. She was one of the most fun people to play Dungeons and Dragons with. I have to admit, <laughs> because you never never not have a laugh with her, with her, and you combine Fred's 
um, humour of as a DM, and then chuck Rosie in the mix in a party, and um, yeah, you just have absolute chaos, um, and it's just non-stop chaos. And I kind of miss those games actually because it was just absolutely messed up, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and just hilarious the whole time. So what paint is this? Teclas blue. Teclas blue, blue is yep, coming next. It's, it's, it's a citadel. It's a citadel. It's one of those cap ones, man. It's, it's old. I've, I've I've kept them because they last a long time. Right. But um, yeah, I mean they're very expensive, and now the new ones are probably more expensive. I'd say because they've made dropper bottles finally. Okay. Well, that's that's an improvement. I used to it used to annoy me. I remember talking to somebody about the citadel paints and with the lift off cap because I mean for years it was either screw top which I preferred or the lift off cap um, which was the worst one yeah. the screw top you know you always had problems because the paint would um, dry around the um, the thread of the, the screw yes yeah, which it does even on those, on those lift up ones it's, and they seal shut yeah and then you can't keep the caps open either it's, yeah. it's just oh. but so you had to make sure you cleaned all the, and this is back when I used Humbrol paint because there was nothing yeah, there yeah. was none of these acrylic paints or these fancy Paints who you did miniatures with. This is back when we were doing dealing with enamel pewter. paints. That's right, enamel. It was smelly, enamel. bloody. Oh, oh yeah, nasty, yeah, nasty, yeah. nasty stuff. Win- windows open, otherwise you were going to get high. Yeah, you were. Uh, yeah, and, and or sick. Yes, that was the next thing. Is headaches. Or both. Yeah, yeah. I think you did get headaches. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I, sometimes I didn't quite. So you could only do it for a certain period of time. Yeah. Uh, Andrea, how's it going? A collective hello to everyone. You are well. I'll welcome. Um, hello, welcome, Andrew. Welcome. Yep. So yeah, I th- look, you and me play Dungeons and Dragons 4E, which I know a lot of people did disliked. But tell me, when you were playing um, Dungeons and Dragons 4E with me, did you dislike the game? No, it was heaps of fun. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, but I don't know about game mechanics. Um, I'm more of a painter than a gamer, so I just sort of trusted what you were doing. Right. You know, when it came to that stuff, because even with when I was playing 40K, I never understood the game. Right. I never really understood it because I just love painting the miniatures. Um, but it was fun. I, I always remember, you know, um, especially when you get our family members in there, Sam and Rosie and um, oh, I'm crying out loud. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I played was he, he was a necromancer or something, I think. Or no, he's a shaman. Shaman, yeah. Remember the shaman? Yes, actually, yes, I do. Yeah. I painted all the miniatures for them. Mm-hmm, that's right. I remember you painting everybody's character miniature. Yeah, I used um, Citadel miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> but now you don't have to worry. I don't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's heaps of amazing stuff that people make and with their 3D printers for D&D, which is... So you can always got a cool option um, for making characters now, I think. Um, well, I would like the idea of seeing you and Sam create characters and then 3D print them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe That would be very cool. May, maybe not the 3D printing um, um, side of things, but maybe the, the art side of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think after, after the little... Um, demo that uh, Sam did the other day it's very very likely now well Sam can sculpt in 3D so he knows how to make he can make them into into, into actual three dimensional characters I know I know but yeah I, I was thinking more just, just the artwork enough is, is, is exciting enough in terms of the whole concept yeah yeah um, so I, I can just let my imagination go completely stupidly wild well I always did so yes <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, it, was, it was never a dull moment playing um, D&D with you so what what colour is that? That's just um, pure white. Pure white. That's Vallejo um, Mecca colour. Okay, all right. Um, which I use a lot of um, because the, you can use them in airbrush. Okay. I tend to, and they're very thin. Right. Because they're because they're airbrush paints, so it's just for mixing the blues, just going transitioning into the lighter. So so I have a question: is it is it better to use the airbrush um, paints for with a brush, um, even though it's for an airbrush, um, just because they are thinner, or not? I don't know. I think if, I think if there was, I think there are paints are designed for brushes um, that are especially thin, like the ones you're using, the army painter ones. Right. Um, that probably are better. That you, I wouldn't run those in an airbrush right. specifically, but yeah. I would use them with a paintbrush. Right. And I wouldn't need to pre-thin everything down, um, like these are pre-thinned down. But yeah. They're designed to go through an airbrush, so it's just it's it's a bit different. The pigment, the way the pigments sit and everything. I think. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I mean, I'm used to it, but um, I'm I'm working on changing it. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I see. So we've got some. We've got some people in here who have been painting for a while. Uh, five plus years. Thirty three percent. I'm not too sure how many people have actually responded to the um, poll, but that's all cool. Look, if you have some questions, um, by all means, throw them out there. Otherwise, we are going to talk about like we're just going to talk about stuff, aren't we? 
basically. Yeah, well, I mean, it's D&D. We can, we can talk about D&D. Yeah, well, um, we... Concepts we'll... from making painting the sky. Um, mm. um, when I, was, I was watching Pan's Labyrinth. I'm watching The Sandman as well at the moment, um, the new Sandman series on Netflix. Mm. Oh, what's this, Andrea? Um, I have never painted... Uh, I have never painted a figure in my life. Uh, it's all right. You don't have to have painted miniatures. Uh, you know, some people like doing it. Some people don't. Some people are good at it. Some people aren't that good at it. My brother is very good at it. Um, I'm. I was all right, and I've just gotten worse over the years. <laughs> uh, you mostly playing online on a platform called Fantasy Grounds. Yeah, a lot of people use Fantasy Grounds. Um, What's that? Uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity is. Um, it's a virtual tabletop, like you, you play in a, a either a, a voice chat room or a video chat room, and, okay. and, and at the same time you've got the this um, two-dimensional, usually it's a two-dimensional sort of um, uh, down um, lockdown map with uh, tokens on it that you can move around. Okay. Um, there are some three-dimensional um, virtual tabletops nowadays, but um, yeah, that's... Uh, and, and what most people are either using Roll Twenty or Fantasy Grounds or Foundry seems to be very popular nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, and what else we've got here? Because our group is um, what is it? Splitting through the uh, the county. Oh, country, country. Oh, splitting through the country. Split through the country. So you're f- oh, so you're playing from Germany to um, Switzerland. Yeah, well, that's I mean, that, the, Switzerland and Germany aren't that far away from each other. Uh, no, they're, yeah, no, not really. They're pretty close, and uh, whereas I know there are some people who are playing in North America and playing games with New Zealanders and Australians and... Uh, interesting sleeping habits they must have. <laughs> I don't think they do have any. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Um, I would like to paint and play uh, live, but I uh, I would I would like to do, do try something. You're very bad at art. Well, do you know... I don't know. Is it, I mean, it's art, but it's it's a little bit. It's like um, um, paint with numbers, isn't it? A little bit painting miniatures, kind of. Depends how you approach it. I'm I'm an artist. I approach it as an artist. Right. So I paint. I'm a painter. I'm not even a gamer, really. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you ran more games, I'd play again. But um, I'm I'm not really a gamer. Um, yep. But you don't necessarily have to be an artist to paint miniatures. I don't. I don't think that's true. Yeah. I kind of used to paint by numbers to a, to a large extent. Yeah. 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 yeah very much. Yeah, the, and you painted pretty good. It was all. It, it was all. It was all right. Yeah. It was all right. Yeah. It was definitely passable. It was definitely good. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely looked cool on the tabletop. Mm. Um, and your 40k stuff was very strange. What well, that? Well, that's only because I decided to make an Arnold Schwarzenegger um, army. And a lizard army. Ah, oh, the lizard army. The lizard marines. The lizard marines. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah people. Which thought, I quite liked actually. Yeah, I found that most people, when they saw um, a space marine with a lizard head, they were like, "Oh, you've made a chaos army." No, 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 no. They're, they're they're just um, old ones, yeah. Uh, and they're like, I don't understand. And I, I tried to explain it to them, and I was like, I give up. So salamanders are um, sort of lizardy. Yeah. So you could have probably put them into that category, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why not have lizard heads? <laughs> they're obviously just you know they're really really into it. Hmm. <laughs> so so Andrea, um, when I play online, and my group has been playing online for the last two years because of our um, most enjoyable pandemic. Oh yes. Uh, I, we actually, we, I mean, right now the DM is using a virtual tabletop sometimes, but mostly Theatre of the Mind. I actually use Theatre of the Mind a lot, but I use um, miniatures, maps, and dice. And I just turn the angle of my webcam, which is currently looking at that miniature, it's usually pointing at my face, and then when I want to run a battle, and it's complicated. I did a, like a live stream on this topic. I just... Um, point it down at the battle map in front of me and then move the miniatures around they tell me what they want their, and their characters to be and I put the monsters where they need to be and we just play um, and it's, it's, it feels pretty close to playing in person without being actually in person um, and, and that was a big thing for me is making sure we had cameras on everybody and we could hear everybody clearly and the platform I use Zoom and I pay for it uh, but then again, I'm a, a YouTuber who does a Dungeon Master Roundtable, so I kind of have to have the pro version. And um, and yeah, we, I use I use battle map miniatures and dice, and I I, I I like the idea of having that, even if we can't play in person because it's too risky. All right, Hawks. So this is uh, J R Hawks. How's it going? 
new to the channel, okay. I'm glad you're new to the channel. Another new person, welcome. You, you. I'm, I'm new to the channel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming in the in the pipeline. Um, things I was not expecting, actually. <laughs> uh, do you spend more time DMing or do you act as a player? Well, because my group consists of there's six of us. So there would be five players, one DM usually, if everybody shows up, which generally does happen. We find that most people do show up week to week. Um, it's not always the case. I'm only DMing when it's my turn, and so I would probably play more than I DM, but you're not allowed to say anything, but I, I actually prepare my DM material while I'm playing the game because there's a lot of downtime while some of our players are trying to... Um, uh, um, steal or connive or um, swindle people of their bits and pieces uh, uh, so a lot of rosies but yeah so so there's a lot of that going on and so therefore there's plenty of time for me to just sit there and let somebody else do the uh, the hard yakka and just laugh uh, so, so I can kind of like um, peruse images on the internet and download them and then put them into files and or folders and, and sort out what I'm going to do and make adjustments to maps and um I got caught out the other day. I think I, um, I think I had not been paying attention enough, and I was like, "Okay, um, how many wyverns are left?" And they said, uh, "There's one." Oh, okay, all right, okay. I thought there was two. Okay, one, run. Sure. Um, I will target uh, that one. <laughs> that, that, since there's only one, I will target that one. Um, but there are other times where I've been caught out. Uh, they they just haven't. I don't think they have actually worked out that I have been doing that. So as long as they don't watch these <laughs> these painting streams while I'm talking about that, then they won't know. So you shh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't believe you. Um, you background voice. I don't believe you background voice. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, seriously, that's it. I, I'm just. I really don't run that many games. I used to. I used to run five or six a week, and it killed me. And so I do a lot less now. Hi, Jasper. How's it going? Ah, hello, Fred and Fred's brother. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing here right now on this thing? Just wet blending. Wet blending? So it's just basically running through. The, I'm lightening the blues up with whites. Um, and so the blue is just the same blue I've been using the ultramarine blue okay and if I want to darken it down I use my intense blue okay which is basically a blowing dark blowing okay um, and I'm just running through that and eventually I will transition to some turquoisey colors okay I've got some sort of turquoise okay cool yeah you know, literally turquoise game color yeah for those of you who are unaware it is going to take a while to do a miniature of this size <sighs> yes it's big it's big it's, it's big it's a big Miniature, but but you, what you did you did pick it. You had a choice. Yeah, well, it looks cool. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, very cool concept of rotating DMs. Um, it's uh, your game streamed. No, uh, we don't do streaming. If I tried doing that, I tried streaming, but um, every time I'm dungeon mastering and trying to stream, the players do their utmost to swear, say the most rude and offensive things they can possibly think of and generally find a way of getting me banned from every platform on the um, sun. And, yeah. and and the reason is that they don't really, I signed up to be on YouTube, right, and um, and Twitch, but they didn't. They don't really want to be uh. part of that process, so that's that's fine. So yeah, I've tried it in the past, it won't ever happen. Um, you won't really see us doing that. They're not comfortable, they want it. It's There's gotta be some private part of your life, um, even if you are on social media, and that's one of those things. It's my home group, it's private private place. Um, I've accepted that. They've made it clear. <laughs> uh, so, yes, that's right, Hawks. Um, brother mentioned being new to the channel. So <laughs> you would explain. <laughs> yes, yes, I came to watch Fred paint, and um, as you can see, that's not happening. Um, he, um, he, he um, what did you call you? shanghai He shanghai me. He sat me down, getting me ready to watch painting, and then you swapped chairs last minute and turned the camera on and said, right, here's your paints. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk to you, and um, you're going to paint. And so now um, I'm on my third, my third time yes, in a row. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even a new miniature now. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's exactly what um, uh, David's doing is wet blending there. Yep. Something I am not very good at. 
Um, so, what's this? Oh, Mushy. Hello, Mushy. Mushy. I believe it's Mushy. I think I got it right. If I got your name wrong, I apologize. Have you guys read any of the Angry GM's blog? Uh, no, because I don't really um, particularly want to read about somebody who's angry. Like, like I get enough angry comments um, on my channel about things that uh, I've said or um, uh, su suggested as it is. Not always, uh, but, you know, if I get one or two out of a hundred, um, it, it affects me. So um, I don't want to be part of that sort of thing. The world's um, got enough issues. We don't need negativity. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So this I don't. It's supposed to be a fun place. Yeah. So it, I, I think um, the angry, um, the angry gnome had contacted me, and I just when I looked at the style of communication, I, I, I found myself starting to feel sick. So I, I had to sort of like, okay, I'm doing like, I get passionate about things too, but yeah. Um, there's a reason why I started the Dungeon Master Roundtable and tried to connect people uh, on YouTube who do uh, roleplay games and miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons or other roleplay games and and um, you know Dungeons and Dragons YouTubers. The idea was to connect us so that we we you could see that you guys everybody could see that we could actually communicate with each other without being dicks. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's where my head is at, rather than trying to be something else. And uh, so, yes. Um, uh, my, uh, my, is your good day going well, Sam? Uh, David? Yes, it's going It's going great. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing I love, painting, so mm -hmm. yep, I can't complain. Man, I did it again. I, I mentioned the other brother. <laughs> I almost called you him again. Well, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. You don't have enough interaction with me, I guess. That's probably it. I'm a bit estranged from everybody at the moment, especially Sam, actually. It's really? Is, so Jasper says, God, my cat is fat. Um, well, if, if you feed the cat more, get him an exercise machine so he can do some like cat exercises. Yeah. Do I wait? Do I watch painting tutorials? I don't actually watch a lot of painting tutorials. What I do is occasionally I will watch somebody who's um, painted something I want to paint, and I'm not too sure what to do. But uh, David, what about you, man? Yeah, I do. I do. I do watch. I watch at the moment. I'm watching a lot of box art style um, bust stuff because the stuff I've got at home are actual busts rather than full size miniatures. Mm. Um, and I'm just working, like wanting to learn how to do you know really nice flesh and doing contrast the right way and all that sort of stuff. So, so I've learned a lot. Um, you know, even with wet blending, it's just you can get it so smooth you can barely see the transitions at all, um, if if at all. Um, so it's. Um, Comes in handy, but um, it's, it depends when you start watching. I start watching them at about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and then so I wake up at about 10, 11. <laughs> this doesn't really work out um, well, so yeah. yeah. And I seem to have a habit at the moment of doing that. So, so that's that's why I have to keep um, sending the um, little text messages. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, Dave, you wake over the. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you're here before twelve. Yep, sweet. <laughs> so, uh, so I think somebody has put down here. Uh, what is it? Um, I am the forever DM. So Andrea, I, 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 it makes me sad when I hear people say that they are the forever DM, because seriously, players need to suck it up and do it themselves as well. Like it's playing the game is doing both. You you play the game as a character and you and you DM. Even if you suck at it, it doesn't matter. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, um, and then obviously you're not going to try and do it straight off the bat, but yeah. Uh, last we did Tomb of Annihilation. Tomb of Annihilation is a brutal adventure. I don't think I'll ever run that. I mean, I don't mind seeing characters die, but I, I when I looked at that adventure, I just like, I just felt really bad, um, and, uh, and I hadn't even run it. Um, yeah. I was like, I was already feeling bad for the players, and uh, if I was going to DM this thing, I was like, no, I can't do this to them. Um, <laughs> yeah, after some character deaths, especially one lost, uh, two in the tomb um, on level three. Uh, we lost um, players. Um, how do you handle players quitting suddenly? Um, it happens. Like, if they, if, they, if they give you some sort of warning, you can do something about it. But if they don't give you any signals or you don't ask or you, there's no way of checking, then there's not much you can do about it other than you go back to them and see if they will communicate with you. But you really can't sort of solve that problem. Um, there's a reason why I have never done a Dungeon Master guide on the Tomb of Annihilation or ever considered doing one on the Tomb of Annihilation. It would be like me trying to do a Dungeon Master Guide on the Tomb of Horrors, which is probably the most... Um, Sounds fun. 
Yeah. Well, it's a convention adventure. It's It was designed for Gary Gygax's group, so it's it's actually designed for extremely experienced and advanced players. Convention, like at an event? Yeah, like oh, a, an uh, event yeah, game. Okay. Yeah, it's an event game. So they're not the same sort of thing. It's not like a sort of play-at-home sort of game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, Tomb of Anni- um, Annihilation is kind of in that same vein, um, unfortunately. I was looking at it, and some of it was like, oh, I've got... I've got um, save or death um, um, mechanics in here. So either you save and you're all right, and if you don't save, you die horribly, and that's it. You don't lose hit points, you just die, which yeah. which is fine if there's some way of like dealing with it, but you can't bring a character back to life in that game. Like when you die, you die. You are collected by the soulmonger, and um, he then um, puts you on the open market and sells you at um, discount prices. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jasper's doing a homebrew campaign um, especially my two players quit through a, um, a message and not pers- um, personally which um, which hurt yeah which is usually why people will do it by a message because they don't want that, that per- interpersonal communication to cause problems I find it's better to get deadly with people once they've got past the beginner phase you don't want to be too I mean I, I'm I'm of the opinion that when you're a beginner, it's best not to get too heavy as a dungeon master, um, and then once they're experienced, no mercy, um, because they can handle it. But you have to work them up to that that point. Do you know what I mean? I know I know the the approach is different nowadays. I know uh, I, when I play that, I got I get too emotionally attached to the characters and stuff. So when you die, and if you've been playing for a while and leveling up your character, and then you die, yeah, um, it just sucks so much. You just don't you just want to quit. Yeah. Um, well, your characters had died. You My remember? characters had died, but I think they found ways of resurrecting me and things like that. Um, that, that they didn't kill the story of my of me. No, um, they 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 temporarily removed me from it for a bit. Oh, they changed <laughs> the changed the way your character was going to be played. Yeah, yeah, I could come back a different way, or, yeah, undead or something. You know, yeah, they, they, they it changed the mechanics, but I was still able to play. Yeah, with the same with, character. With the same character ish. It's kind of ish. Kind of ish. Yeah, I think you wound up with wings at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, you die and you come back as an angel. That's right. <laughs> That's I did too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried everything under the sun, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, are you going to be painting a knight? Uh, an, is that a knight haunt? A knight haunt, too. I don't know. Audio wall. Uh, I don't think I have a, a, a knight haunt anywhere. Um, if you're talking about a night walker, the night walker in New Zealand is expensive enough. I, I'm not getting to. No, I will let David paint it, and um, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> How much is the night walker in New Zealand? If you were to buy one outright from a shop, forty dollars. Holy crap! Yes. Just for one. Yes. What? Yeah. I can get two from Etsy for thirty. Well, okay, but it's Etsy. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those little little ones, they're only like $10. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're this, the these largest. are the same size. Two of these size, they're different from this miniature, but yeah. they're two the same size. Yeah, no, exactly what you're talking about. Um, yeah, well, hey, you know, that's what they do. That, that's It's New Zealand. It's, it's, it's New Zealand, but it's also a company that's making money. Mm-hmm. It's just what they do. And Games, it, it's, at least it's not Games Workshop. And it's shipping. You know, like, you get a deal with shipping nowadays is really brutal. That's why all the prices on all of the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, everything's gone up quite a lot. By like, food, anything. And everything is yeah. expensive now. Yeah. It's, um, f- and food is very expensive now. So. Yeah, you can't, can't go anywhere, man. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> M14 SRV. Look, I haven't ignored you. I'm, I'm just slow. I thought mm-hmm. they were, um, were black as, as blue, like a, a, a shadow, um, lighter colour. Um, so... So whatever you think the Nightwalker is, okay, in terms of the colour scheme, M14, forget about that because um, David is going to be doing his own thing here. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's a Shadow Walker, um, um, but I'm a painter. I don't, I don't really play games, so I'm, I'm just trying to make it interesting because I'm pl- just painting something black. I could just airbrush it and then put an airbrush of a bit of grey tinges over it and then call it done. Right. Um, and then it would be take me five minutes to paint this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like painting, so I want to make it. You know, I want to paint the miniature, so um, I um, want to get colours out of it and bl- dark blues. As I'll bring it back down, it's, yeah. it's going light at the moment, but I'll bring it back down and adding some sort of turquoises and stuff in there. Um, it's still night sort of colours, um, right. I think. So it's like the colour of night is dark, dark blue. So that's yeah. what I'm sort of going for. Yep. Uh, so M14, what do you got here? Reverse of Andrea. What do you do when DM bites the bullet? 
Well, I would say to you, if you are a DM and you bite the bullet, that that's very dangerous to do. You don't want that going off in your mouth, so don't bite bullets. And I imagine the metal in there is not very good for you either. So, um, yeah. What does it mean for a DM to bite the bullet? Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I'm assuming he actually put a physical bullet in his mouth and bit on it. Um, you know, I don't know. It depends how much money you've got to spend at the dentist. Yeah, you, if you could expl- explain a little bit more about um, um, uh, your situation in 14, um, I, I, I can respond. Otherwise, I'm going to probably just crack um, biting bullet jo- jokes because I'm not... Does biting the bullet mean quitting? Yeah, does that mean, yeah, does that mean quitting or, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe it does mean quitting. Or not yeah. being the forever DM. I'm not sure. Like, oh, like fully, like just stopping DMing. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Biting the bullet. So anyway, mm. so moving on. Um, Jasper, uh, it was supposed to be uh, one shot, uh, but the campaign keeps going. Okay, maybe I made it too long. Yeah, look, find a way to end it, and like you, you need to tell people. One of the best ways for players to get into dungeon, being a dungeon master, is to say you're going to run one one shot you're going to run a one shot just do one thing like one session run something for a session and see how you find it you'd be surprised sometimes players discover they've actually got a knack for it or they actually like doing it even if they're not really that good but they're willing to keep coming back do you know what i mean is get everybody to do a one shot i think that's the easiest way to get people going into the game um, and then you know look if you've got a group and they all dungeon master the survival of that group is so much more likely uh, what do you got here, Andrea? Thank you. My players just don't want to um, do it. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I, f- I feel like that's... I, f- I mean, there are people who, who sort of um, think that way. I feel that's very selfish, honestly. I love D&D, um, but it gets exhausting to uh, be always the, um, the preparer for the players. Yeah, so this is one of the things I'm going to do Andrea with these classes that are coming up for the Dungeon Master prep is I'm going to show you how to do less prep and a lot of these tutorials will actually do the prep for you so you can just use the stuff yourself like I mean a lot of channels are already doing that sort of thing but you know me if um, I, I probably produce more than most channels do so if you sign up to Patreon, <laughs> you probably get bombarded with emails. You probably get at least two emails, maybe three um, from me. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say at least something like two or three, usually a week. Then in a month, that's what, four times three is 12. And if I start doing these classes, it'll probably turn into six uh six more seven seven a week in your email <laughs> and then yeah potentially about six or seven in, in your email per week which multiply that by four for a month it'll be a lot so yes um i will spam the shite out of your um your email with my patreon uh <laughs> that's what we're looking at for the future uh okay what do you got here m14 um there's an american dm uh, that has played DM, uh, has played DM for like 30 years, but he has seen 50-year um, year people cry cry on their character death. Uh, so I've seen people in their 50s cry when their character dies. It does happen. It's it's not it's not just reserved to the to the young. Uh, you know, the older generation do get it very connected to this sort of thing. So yeah, it it, it can happen. Um, it was my second after Fandelva TT Tomb of Annihilation is really difficult yes now stay away from it um, I personally just don't think it's uh, something to encourage you're now preparing the Curse of Strahd okay well that's a tough one you can probably pull it off if you've done if you've done a lot of Tomb of Annihilation and you've done Lost Mine of Fandelva then yeah give, give Curse of Strahd a go um, I would just make your sessions shorter so that you don't get too exhausted and your players don't you're watching my guide now? Okay, cool, cool. Um, hopefully it's going to be um, be all right. No, so you don't have to write, um, write a lot. No, look, <laughs> uh, a lot of the stuff now that you see coming out of my channel is more on monster lore. So there are monsters that you could incorporate into that kind of campaign or into Spelljammer since the, the, new, the new thing is traveling in space dungeons and dragons in space hey? yes this is now science fiction fantasy well there's it's always been around 
Oh. Yeah, but they're just re- redoing it. Astral planes? Yes. Because uh, I remember you got us to fly around in space at one point. Yes, we... In a boat. That's right. Yeah. The, you were part of my uh, Spelljammer campaign. Yeah. That's yeah, we were in space. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I think I was an angel by that point. Uh, something like that, yeah. yeah. I remember you guys asking me the, the question about, oh, how does how does air work in gravity? <laughs> like, do we float off the boat? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And how do you breathe on the boat and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah and I said, just stop thinking about it too hard, yeah, okay? Yeah, it's, yeah, there, yeah. There's air. Just stop there's it. There's air, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's air on the boat. It's not right. Yeah, it's a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you don't get why people um, take it personally when character dies. Uh, well, see, I played War, um, Warhammer 40K, so when characters on the table died, uh, they had like one hit point or four hit points at the most, and so you have a whole army though. So I didn't care. Like yeah. you know, they were disposable. Um, so I, I, I had a pretty thick skin when it came to dealing with Dungeons and Dragons. Like, oh, character died. Sure, I remember my the first dungeon master who ran me through three point five. Um, even though I, I started with advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I don't really know how to play it. And then. <laughs> And he said, oh, do you, want, do you want to keep playing your character? We can bring him back. And I'm like, "What are you? don't be stupid. Because I didn't understand that like, you could bring characters back. It was completely new to me. <laughs> D&D in space. Yeah, mate, you've got to do D&D in space at some point. You've got to do it all. Try it all. Yeah. Yeah, find the stuff you like. Um, That's what's so good about D&D. Yeah, M14. Okay, he's, 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 he elaborated on the, um, oh, bite the bullet. Um... Uh, pop his clogs. The DM crashed his motorcycle between weekly sessions. Then no more DM, and the Ooh. full group traumatized. Okay, all right. Well, that's let, pretty serious. That sounds bad. I, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna respond to that. That just sounds terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Ranch, how's it going? Uh, is that Drax? 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 Ranch Draxed. Drag tricks. Drag tricks. I think it is Ranch Drag tricks. I saw you were um, live. That's right. I've been live because I'm on holiday and I have um, shanghaied my uh, brother into painting. I left a comment and let um, let it run uh, for the uh, logarithm. Okay. Do not regret. Why would you regret supporting me? Why would you regret? I... Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We don't have to agree on everything. All right, let's make it r- clear right now. I've had this, these discussions with other YouTubers and like, guys, we don't have to agree on everything. We just need to be able to communicate our ideas and still be able to talk to each other the next day. Yeah, yeah, without, um, without using too much colourful language. Exactly, exactly. Being, it's a discussion, eh? It's yeah, a discussion. It's a discussion, yeah. yeah. And, and accepting somebody else's ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it's been a lot of live stream because I'm on holiday. So I'm not really doing live stream content as such. That's what I'll be doing. Uh, prepping slides is what I'm doing after this. A lot of slide work. Um, space hamster is OP. The space hamster is not OP. My sp- I've got a giant killer space hamster in an adventure I've I've, uh, I've created, and. Um, and it's, it's, it's apparently being rendered into an actual piece of artwork. A frightening possibility, I have to say, people, is a... Oh, yes. You remember? Sam, the one that Sam's recommended? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, that's yes, the one. Yes, yeah. this is a space hamster. The space hamster. Oh, it's not. It's not a space hamster. It's a giant killer um, hamster. Yeah. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a giant space hamster. It's just a giant killer hamster. What do hamsters eat? Little pellets, eh? Well, yeah, well, they'll eat grass. So this is a carnivorous well, no, story. Well, well, mine is. It'll, <laughs> it'll eat anything. I feel like it's more of an omnivore. It likes a salad on the side with but its it would, meat. But, but a good steak would be nice. Uh, but a good steak, yeah, with a, with a salad on the side yeah, is, yeah. is the, the best way to go. <laughs> and he's just a very large omnivore. That's right. Yeah, yeah very large. Yeah. yeah, And fluffy. And everything looks like food because yeah. he's big. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks cute yeah. until he bites you. If he's hungry, yep. you won't like me if I'm hungry. Yeah, and <laughs> and if he if he smiles, you probably know you're in trouble. Yeah, because he's hungry. Mm-hmm. He's, got that, <laughs> he's ready for dinner. That, that smile of yes, you're tasty and look yep. delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I've prepared the salad for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just need a dressing to go with it yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> bit of gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ranch, what do you got here? If you have um, thick skin, do you have my uh, re- you have my respect? Well, you know, <laughs> thank you. I, I, I do feel like that um, being on social media, um, you think your skin is never thick enough. Frankly, there's some stuff that goes on, and I like. I just think, are people insane? <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I even I even used to get upset when I lost characters and um, um, lost miniatures in 40k. So I, so I, I've so I always I still struggle with losing characters in, in yeah. Dungeons and Dragons because uh, yeah. I like them. I don't want them to die. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you're mixing a lot of blues, whites in here, and um, and black. I see. It seems yeah. to be the, yeah, the blue, int- black, dark blue, um, ink, ink, and um, ultramarine blue, and then white. So there's just there's just the black, the um, ink tints, um, blue, which is just a blue dark ink, mm-hmm. um, ultramarine blue, and white. Right. Cool. And that's pretty much it. And um, I will glaze over. I'll do like 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 glazing washes over the top of turquoise to bring in some different colors and bring the light down a bit to make them darker okay um, but um i like i like strong contrast yeah because um you know even with a dark miniature it's like this miniature is really cool you want to see his muscle tones and his you know he's really cool like yeah. you know um yeah yeah i like it i like i like strong contrast it makes things pop out right yeah it's cool all right i'll stop distracting you Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, so what else have you got here? Uh, to me, satire is is as natural as breathing. So uh, one of the things that my mum has always told me is that uh, my sarcasm is uh, not good. And I t- it's too natural for me, unfortunately. Coming from the sarcastic, sarcastic mum. Well, that's true. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, so, uh, so I try really hard not to let that go that way. It's fine if you don't give him a smurf. You don't, okay, yeah, let's not go there. Just leave the smurfs alone. Um, because I didn't. Uh, so, <laughs> so, sometimes people some like some people call ba- you know, some people call, um, like in the in the pans, they rent, they call there's the baby eater and all that sort of stuff. But Fred, uh, Fred's the smurf demolisher, okay. Well, <laughs> look, I used to love them, and then there's a point where I tw- that I, I turned, you hated them, I turned, I hated them, yeah, I really did. Okay, and sometimes people like to prove my satire has hit its mark. Oh, really? Okay, all right, I didn't know that. Um, I remember you can buy a hamster in Mass Effect. Well, I don't remember being able to do that in the game. No. No, okay. Well, well your memory's better than mine, mine Jasper. Um, Which one? Which Mass Effect? I don't know. He didn't say. Uh, Drew Everin. Uh, ever played Twilight Imperium? No, I haven't played Twilight Imperium. I can't play video games anymore. They just ruined my life. I just wind up doing video games and nothing else. So... I, I don't play video games. Uh, there are times where I've been very tempted to play them, and then I realise I'm not actually interacting with anybody. I mean, it's bad enough that I spend most of my time in a, in a little office doing YouTube stuff as it is. Like, that's pretty isolating, which is part of the reason why I have a Discord where I can talk using video and um, or voice chat to people, like, rather than just typing in there. It's a board game. Ah, okay. Um, I haven't played. I haven't played a lot of board games recently. It's been years, actually. I think about it. I think the last time I played a board game, it might have been Doom. We used to play a lot of Doom at one point. Huh. What's the last one I've played? Um, it was a Dungeons and Dragons game. I think was the last time I played this with you. But um, we played Star Wars for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All this. Which was basically like Dungeons and Dragons, yes. Star Wars. The Star Wars RPG. Yeah. I talked to people about that game not that long ago. Star Wars Saga. Um, yeah. They've actually made somebody's made a um, a conversion uh, for Five E Star Wars Five E they call it. There's four books. It's all free because they can't charge anything because they break the. They get into trouble for copyright stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's Star Wars, of course. Disney now owns it, so. Well, I mean, yeah, and and which is fine, but I, I love the fact that there's so much material and it's actually pretty good. Mm. So I've got to definitely talk about that at some point. But um, I also like doing scary stuff. I like to scare players, um, if I can. I don't know that I scared you guys that much. You overwhelmed us. Overwhelmed you, yeah. yeah. Because you, I don't think you could scare us because Rosie always turns something into it. She still still was hoarding stuff when you were trying to. Yeah. And it was still a joke. Yeah. Um, but you overwhelmed us, and then she had no choice but to, 
to join in the fight. Right. Yeah. Because um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. otherwise, we would, she wouldn't be able to hoard anything. Yeah. There, I mean, there's there's only so much you can do as a dun- dungeon master to scare your players. Um, I'm not talking about scaring your characters. Um, the, the the goal is to scare the players, not the, the characters. The characters is that's easy. Well, overwhelming is a good way to scare. I, I, them. <laughs> the only way I can think of. And and look, you have to do something with four E because after a point, you guys were so powerful. Um, oh, what's 5e like in some comparison then? I would say 5e is um, is not as bad because uh, there's there's not quite so many there's not quite so many things going on. Okay. Uh, for 4e, it was it was even more difficult. Um, I can at least to a certain degree tweak monsters and make it work, whereas it was monster creation in 4e is um, much harder. Um, right. Frankly, okay. whereas there are little things I can do in Five E to make it easier. Yeah. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Drew said, uh, "What's this? Uh, it is a megalith comment. A megalith comment. Okay. All right. A megalith comment. Uh, took us ten hours for one game. It's a inter- intergalactic s- Starcraft like game. Well, ten hours. If that feels like playing um, Monopoly." You remember how Monopoly used to take four hours, and at the end, everybody hated who ever had won the game because they'd taken all of their money and all of their properties, yep. and you never wanted to play it again. Yeah, yeah. And then you, and then you're like, you didn't even want to talk to the person, frankly. They're like, you. Is that is that like um, you capitalist? You you. You know, how yeah. that, you know how that Star Wars game you're just playing with the spaceships. Yeah. The little spaceships. Yeah, yeah. Is that, that sound, is that what that's like? I wonder if it's a Starcraft game. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it, it sounds interesting, yeah. Um, but yeah. Andrea, um, Gothic, is it Gothic 2, Baldur's Gate 2, Witcher 3, and Last of Us, my favourite uh, games. Okay. I, I've i never played played The Witcher 3. I've never, I played Baldur's Gate 2 briefly. I've played Witcher 3. You've played Witcher 3? What did you think of it? Um, it's very immersive. Um, it's, it's good, but um, I'm a little bit like you. I'd rather, um, I'm, I like to create stuff and be productive, so um, I struggle to play... Um, uh, video games now. Okay. Because I try to, I'd rather try and make some, yep. um, create things. You have to move it forward a little bit, I think. Yeah. Sort of make it, yeah. Sort of in the centre or at the front of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, that's the same way I feel. I feel like I've become far more productive by not playing, dun- uh, you know, video games yeah. and Dungeons and Dragons and running a YouTube channel. I feel like I've, I've actually affected more. Well, good products. Good, yeah, I've good, played like um, good results. Ori and the Wind of the Wisps and stuff like that. They're like little short adventure games that um, have a fun little story and they, they don't take too long to play. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's sort of cool. But yeah, The Witcher and that sort of thing. Like it's, it's like Skyrim, you know. It just it's um, probably you can play Skyrim pretty much indefinitely though. But um, um, in The Witcher, I don't know if it's like that. But it's it's it's, an, it's, an, it's very merciful. It's very big. It takes a long time to play it. Yeah, I always felt like when I was playing a video game, uh, I keep re- having to remind myself. Do you remember when I was playing Forza and the various Forza games? Like, I would just spend hours and hours in a darkened room, essentially, playing on my own, not talking to anybody. Ten hours would pass, 12 hours would pass. Yeah, it's late at night. I haven't had enough sleep, but I've got to get up and go to work. And I haven't actually communicated with anybody whatsoever. No, that's bad. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, so, if you like that, then you can't. Yeah, so uh, my, my, my personality is just too addictive to those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, and I really struggle with that. that so I, I, I leave it alone. Um, and instead, even though I think I probably have been seriously become addicted to Dungeons and & Dragons and running the YouTube channel, at least it's, <laughs> a, at least it's got some human you've contact. You've been doing it for a long time, so I can see why. You know, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, and um, it's, it's something that... Um, well, you can communicate with people about it. You know, you can. You know, it's not just. Um, yeah. You're not just on a, on a gaming machine, not talking to people. Yeah. Um, it's so, so. Jasper's played a lot of Skyrim. I remember Skyrim. Yeah, it's very yeah, easy. Yeah, me and me and Rose played it, um, um, Elder Scrolls online together and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, it's cool. But um, I probably, to be honest, would prefer to play Dungeons and Dragons. And the reason being is because Rosie is exactly the same in a game like that as she is in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so she's just all hoarding stuff, and you're trying to fight everything while she's hoarding, yeah. and you're trying not to die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, you need more people in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> 
Man, it's um, it's certainly coming along. What's yeah. what's the plan with the horns? The horns will be a sort of like a grey, a grey, yeah. Gray. Same with the hoofs, okay, uh, and the fingernails. Um, they'll be very dark though, very very dark. Mm-hmm. Probably the darkest thing, yeah. And yeah. then I'll make his um, eyes sort of glow a little bit. And, cool, cool. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so um, uh, so thank you for everybody who's been uh, um, keeping the chat going because it gives us something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you got here, Drew? Um, I play D and D online with my group, uh, but I've um, at least printed the party's characters. Ah, so do you use? Do you play with miniatures online? Do you use the the miniatures online and just point a camera um, at it when you need to, like I do, or uh, do you just paint the character miniatures and just have them sitting on a shelf collecting dust, like many? miniatures do <laughs> I don't know how you guys can do that I know you play it online I, I would, I'd play it online you know like you want to have I'm just used to sitting at the table with the people eh? you know well we, we would look we would prefer to but the, the reality is that um, you know mum's 70 and uh, everybody who I play with are, are either hanging out in Auckland which is like the uh, the petri dish of, of disease and then um, you know, uh, some of the um, other players have got uh, parents who are in their seventies, you know, in the middle to late seventies. So it's just not practical, you know. Mm. Although they're immune compromised, so it's just not it's not practical to do that. Mm. Like it's just too risky. What about family game though? Uh, are you not enough players? Eh? Oh, I uh, suppose it depends how you can pull on you. Know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I will see. I mean, our family is a bit of a mess right now. Uh, yeah, that's the other problem. Yeah, that's the other problem. Exactly. Um, uh, what do you got here, Jasper? I love um, Tamriel online, but I fear. Oh, Tamriel, Tom, Tamriel online. Yeah, that's some um, part of the uh, Elder Scrolls online, I think. Oh, okay. All right. I don't really. Know. I don't remember that one. I never played Tamriel. Tamriel's like a, um, an, an elf um, wizard type. Um, it's pretty cool. It's it's cool. It's it's um, it's cool. Me and Rose have played it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you use a virtual map on your on your computer desk. Okay, your desktop computer. Okay, I get it. I get it. All right. Four to five um, players live within three miles. The other are eight hours away. Ouch. Yeah, well, so... Yeah, I suppose the thing with online is you get the advantage of being able to play with anyone in the world. Mm-hmm. Anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, I mean, our DM is now living in the South Island in Ashburton, so it's not really practical for us to meet to, in person nowadays. No, but you, you can DM. Well, yeah, I can DM, but he, he can DM too. He just does it online on using Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we, we have become more spread out, and I think what will happen is more and more of us will spread out. And there's, there's one of us in Oriwa, so he's he's not that far away. It's about, what, 45 minutes from me? Do you think if it's becoming all online that you get the opportunity to play in some of the celebrity games? Or would that still become an exclusive thing? I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't think. I don't think people really. Um, yeah, I'm not really too concerned about. It. People have offered, um, but not necessarily celebrity games. Not for me. I'm. I'm a small person. I'm a nobody. It Every, doesn't really matter when you're online. You're just a game player when you're online, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, Andrea, I haven't played a video game in ages. Uh, now with the kids, there is no more room to sit there and play. I prefer playing with uh, my kid. Uh, rather than playing because we yeah no exactly yeah if you don't if you play video games you don't talk and that's one of the, this is why I created the Dungeon Master Roundtable is because I get to talk with other YouTubers about Dungeons and Dragons and YouTube and but not mostly Dungeons and Dragons and role play games and I get to do that for like you know two hours or a, a good example of hardcore gamers and stuff is our nephews yeah and they just don't talk to you at all. They come over to have a social time and they'll just be on their phone watching YouTube videos and they're yeah. not talking to you at all. They're just, they've just completely disconnected from the real world. You, you actually have to pick up your phone, I've found, and you have to text them while they're, they're in, the in the same, same room, room as you yeah, yeah. to actually get their attention. Yeah. And you send them a text on to their phone from your phone and then they'll look, look up and smile. Yeah. And then they'll go back to their phone. Yeah, again. then they will, yeah. And <laughs> it's pretty weird. It is very, very strange, I have to say. But, um, you know, that's that's how it is. Those, yeah. yeah, I and and, and I, I I have to say that the Discord has been really helpful because I get to hang out with um, the subscribers, the um, the patrons on Patreon, and just general 
whoever has managed to figure out how to get into my Discord. Yeah. It's not that much big of a secret, really. But um, And they can just come and chat with me, voice and video chat, which is good while I'm working on stuff. More than a few of them have affected how I make decisions, too. So that, that's been interesting. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah. Well, our hour's up, dude. How are you feeling about uh, wrapping up? It looks like you must be need some food by now, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it, the, that's the downside, I suppose. It just kind of sucks to stop. But but, um, but, you, but, but, you uh, but you do. You do have to stop. Otherwise, you run out of the steam. The funny thing is, is I'm going to go back home and paint something else. You know that, eh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But, you know, but that, that's your own project rather than hang out here. and. Well, I'm painting a soaker chain. I've almost finished you. But um, this is quite cool because it's so big, you know, that's why I like doing the busts. Because it's so big and the busts are about the same size, actually, they just have the legs cut off. Um, they There's so much area to work with, you really can paint it like a painting, which I really like. Yeah. Um, and playing with contrast and those things because it's so big. It's um, And it also looks really impressive when it's finished because it is so big. Mm -hmm. you know? um, that would look cool on, the, on, a, on a table game. Yeah, it, it absolutely would. It'd probably freak me out too if I saw that well, on the table as well. But um, I would stick it on the table for sure, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you coming back tomorrow to continue? Yes. Same yeah. times. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me a text message. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if I'm going to be watching um, yeah, watching yeah. Um, 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 painting tutorial videos at one o'clock in the morning. Anymore. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> So Jasper said he's done uh, video games since he prefers board games. Oh, fair enough. Absolutely. And I think I do too, actually, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And I'd rather play D&D. &D. Uh, the, the the, what's the, the token is getting really cool. I'm not sure what the token is all about. If I missed something. Is the, the token the, like you, how you can have a character token? Oh, yeah, character tokens. Yeah, no, they're, they're fine. I mean, they've been around for years. They sort of make them out of acrylic now with a little... Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, I have to say, I do feel like phones have, um, I, I put, my phone is now permanently set to um, uh, do not disturb. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Uh, all, my, all my family know that they either have to contact me through Facebook and then wait a day for me to respond. Or if you respond. If I respond, that's right, if I respond, or text message me, because if calling me won't get through. It just won't happen. No, yeah. So I do, you know, text message you, but the downside, the only downside to that is, is I want to show you updates on some of the stuff I'm I, doing at home with I, paintings. I, I know. And you don't ever look at your Facebook. Very, very rarely. Yeah. Very rarely. Maybe if I emailed you. That wouldn't help. I, 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 I had to go through my emails and I'd delete about 30 emails that had some packed up <laughs> over the weeks. Uh, and I've been on holiday, so it's made it worse. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> but it's looking good. It's, it's, you know, the contrast is still there. It's layering. It's nice. It's probably going to take a couple more sessions, I think, though. Which is going to mean I'm going to have to make some more thumbnails. Uh, yeah. To ensure that we get, get this right. So um, we're going to say thank you to everybody who hung out with us today. Yeah, thanks, guys. And, and girls. Yeah, yeah, guys and girls. And uh, I want to say, look, um, keep painting. Keep playing Dungeons & Dragons. Keep playing board games. Keep doing whatever you're doing. Um, and have as much fun as you possibly can because, cool, blimey, we need it. Mm. And uh, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee, or the early morning, look after yourself, your family and friends, and what's the last thing we say? Hey, keep rolling those 20s. <laughs> Bye. Do you want to type it in? Can you write Mitchell's grass yes in there? If you want. <laughs> Go for it. How do you spell it, bro? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I just type it in. <laughs> Oh, hang on, let's, let's, let's get this yep. box right. Go for it. If we got our spelling wrong, sorry. <laughs> <It's there. laughs> that just basically says goodbye, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening and good night. <laughs>